Hello and welcome to News Click. The agrarian crisis has become core agenda of various political parties, many of them promising loan waivers, and this is one of the core issues on which this election is being fought. But we should not forget that the AIKS, All India Kisan Sabha, was one of the few organizations who has brought this issue to the front. If we see long marches in Maharashtra, the massive mobilization of farmers in Seeker and elsewhere in the country. To discuss about agriculture, its role in 2019 election and the AIKS itself, we are joined by Viju Krishnan, Joint Secretary of AIKS and the Central Committee Member of the CPIM. Welcome to News Click Viju. Hi. So let's start with the Narendra Modi government. If you look at the manifesto that they have brought out in 2019, the points are almost similar. So how do you see the BJP manifesto and its, uh, its role vis-a-vis -vis uh, agriculture in the last five years? No, actually you see uh, 2014 itself, the kind of hopes it had raised through its manifesto and the speeches of the Prime Minister, that has been totally belied. So this uh, in 2019, once again talking about doubling farmers' incomes, that the farmers are not going to buy. And this election, very clearly as far as the rural masses are concerned, the agrarian crisis is the central issue which is going to determine which way they are going to um, decide in the uh, elections. So I think uh, it is uh, the BJP is in for trouble in the uh, in 2014 they had managed to get a lot of support in uh, some of the states which are more predominantly agrarian states uh, Haryana and Maharashtra being uh, examples where they could form governments on their own right. and uh, for the first time. So in uh, all these areas, they are going to face a huge setback. And uh, I have been uh, going across the country in, uh, for the election campaign. And this issue comes again and again. Right. So if you look at assembly elections, which took place three, four months back, uh, last month of 2018, the Congress has won in three states. And they claim that as soon as they have come to power, they have done loan waivers. And they're also saying in the 2019 manifesto that they'll, they'll bring a Kisan budget when they come to power. But do you think is it feasible if we look at the Congress policies vis-a-vis -vis agriculture in last 10 years when they were in power, UPA 1, UPA 2, especially UPA 1 because left was supporting it so they were on, they couldn't pursue those policies. But in UPA 2 and this deterioration has started even in their regime because if you look at the agricultural output and growth it is at 14 years lowest so it has started long back so do you think congress manifesto is feasible when it comes to agriculture no actually you see uh, the last five years our allegation against the bjp has been that they have been carrying forward the neoliberal economic policies at a much uh, uh, faster pace plus cow uh, yeah plus cow and uh, uh, so, uh, what we find is, uh, it has been promoting corporate profiteering and uh, the market forces have been given a free hand. Now, if you look at the Congress manifesto, it says the Congress economic philosophy is guided by open market liberal uh, uh, economy. It would be an open market liberal economy and it accuses the BJP of actually reversing the clock of reforms and uh, goes on to say that the Congress is going to further uh, remove the regulations. It is over-regulated now. In fact, we have been saying that it is because of deregulation that the prices of uh, inputs, agricultural inputs, seeds, uh, fertilizers, pesticides, all have been increasing. Also of other, uh, for instance, the uh, uh, petrol and diesel and those things. Uh, but the Congress now says that they are going to further uh, remove these regulations. And as far as the uh, trade policies, free trade uh, policies, both have, have followed the same thing. Right. As ASEAN free trade, now there is the regional comprehensive economic partnership. There is no difference in their policies on these two issues. Right. And also if you look at, they say that if you're not able to pay back the loan, it won't be a criminal offence, it will be a civil offence, as if that makes a difference. Because when it comes to the loans that are given to the farmers, I mean, there's no regulation on that as well. The uh, Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana, everybody knows what's the amount that is going to the corporates. So you think there would be any difference in terms of that also because the policies are going to be the same, maybe renamed again. 
it it is uh, just uh, the same thing in a new uh, package uh, you could find and uh, while bjp is talking about doubling farmers incomes it is sticking to the pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana and so on and it towards the end it came with the kisan samman nidhi right so which is talking about 6000 rupees for a farmer up, uh, owning up to 2 hectares and that in entire year in a year so that would be about uh, 500 rupees a month 17 rupees a day but let us see if both these manifestos are silent on this c2 plus 50 right it is only the cpim which is very clear that it is it will legislate it will ensure uh, enforce this uh, c2 plus 50 uh, as the msp and uh, in both these cases if you look at the c2 plus 50 if that was given in the case of paddy right. in most parts of india farmers are getting between 800 to 1000 only though the msp of paddy is 1750 per quintal because there is no procurement in kerala it is 2350 now it has been increased to 2650 so even if you take uh, a hectare of uh, land bengal or bihar the production is around 4 tons per hectare so the farmer is getting about 40000 if it was 1750 it should have been around 70000 if it was even 2350 let us not take the 2650 2350 then the farmer in bengal or bihar would have got about 65000 rupees more per crop and it is in such circumstances he is talking about 6000 rupees and in all these manifestos you don't find a way to make uh to address issues of like procurement what is going to happen about it um the storage part of it because all these things are also important issues even if the government announces msp if it's not been procured in the market if it's not stored then it doesn't it is it is just notional it yes. is just notional no it is just on paper and uh, the congress manifesto says it will uh, allow more private players to uh, enter into all these areas uh, whereas we have been uh, very clear that public investment is required cooperatives should uh, 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 play a role and uh, also the panchayats right. in uh, procurement because uh, the network of procurement it has to be uh, much more wider just like the kerala government has been trying to implement in last few years right yeah yeah it is uh, the kerala government has uh, uh, that has helped in production of paddy and all uh, that some of these policies and the and cooperatives play an important role uh, tr- truly uh, because you see in most of the cases there is no uh, other than procurement even where there is procurement there is nothing done by the government in terms of value addition and marketing it is totally again in the hands of the private sector so here cooperatives could play a role where the profits that accrue from it can be pl- uh, can be ploughed back to the farmers So let's come back to the CPIM manifesto that you were talking about. What are the things that CPIM is promising in its manifesto vis-a-vis revival of agriculture, revival of peasantry? Firstly, increase public investment. That is a very important aspect because we are finding uh, systematic withdrawal of the government. Uh, from public investment in agriculture there is cuts in subsidies we are very clear that there would be increase in subsidies and that uh, the input should be uh, publicly provisioned uh, to the farmers at cheap rates uh, very importantly the demand of the farmers for a uh, legislation for msp c2 plus 50 that i think only the cpim is the only party which has very clearly mentioned that that it would be enforced and uh, it would be legally uh, binding to um, give this kind of a rate uh, as the msp and uh, we have also taken a position on loan waivers g- keeping the interest rates very low that is something which we have mentioned loan waivers is uh, uh, unlike what is happening now it is more uh, a palliative it is important in uh, when farmers are in crisis that there is a loan waiver but uh, the way it is implemented we have seen in uh, uttar pradesh for instance farmers People are getting 1 rupee, rupee or 5 rupees yeah so you have the kerala model where you have the debt relief commission mm-hmm. which looks into uh, each individuals w- what is the uh, loan that th- th- that they have to repay and how that c- could be waived in, uh, and that led to a fall in the number of suicides in in kerala wynad had around 3000 suicides now you don't find suicides in that uh, uh, nature anymore so i mean there has been a argument that why should the loan waiver be given where will the money come from and the way you are suggesting how the kerala government has implemented debt relief commission so i think then this logic doesn't stand that 
money can be arranged if you can give corporate loan waivers then the farmers can obviously be yeah, given yeah that, that is only um, what uh, who is your priority whether it is the corporate uh, companies or is it the uh, farmers and agriculture workers and uh, if your priority is the farmers and agriculture workers surely um, there are ways and if you have a political will that can be implemented uh, now we have seen how from malia to modis how they have been fleeing the country and uh, the chaukidar has just been uh, <laughs> sleeping so uh, the people know this so agricultural workers is an important point and no other manifesto seems to talk about it cpim has put it as a special point in the manifesto what is your see our struggles wage has been a significant issue and we are very clear that it should be at least 600 rupees and even in a nrega we are talking about increasing the number of days not just 100 increasing it as well as uh, ensuring it is linked to the minimum wage uh, which uh is linked to the inflation, inflation also yes. so that is something which only the cpi must mention very significantly for the uh, small and marginal farmers there is also talk about a labor subsidy which uh, the cpi manifesto has come up with we have been the only um, organizations which have been talking about comprehensive social security measures for uh, the agriculture workers the landless labor uh, their housing is an issue house sites is an issue which uh, also we have been mentioning about so what would be your concluding note for this entire election you think that the bjp is on a losing turf because agrarian crisis has deepened in the rural areas and that is where the maximum amount of votes are being polled true the B, this is uh, the agrarian crisis and the way the bjp has handled it is pro proving to be the waterloo for modi and his team and uh, irrespective of different surveys uh, which have been pro again projecting i think uh, the farmers have decided and uh, that is going to show in the elections also thanks a lot viju for giving us your time thanks a lot that was viju krishnan for you keep watching news click